Hello and welcome to Encompass Live. Um, I'm Krista Burns from the Last Nebraska Library Commission. I am your host and your presenter today. Um, Encompass Live is a weekly online event that the Library Commission has started doing this year, 2009, where we cover um, NLC activities and topics, um, anything of interest to librarians um, in Nebraska. We do these sessions free for one hour on um, Wednesday mornings, 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, you can come in any time and uh, join us with these live uh, sessions live, or you can watch recordings afterwards. Um, this morning, I am going to do a presentation on changing uh, libraries, um, how they are changing. Um, lots of changes going on in the library world. Um, how you deliver your services is changing. So tools and um, that you can use are changing and new things are coming out. And the commission has been experimenting with a lot of these tools. I'm going to show you some of the things that we've been doing here um, that you can use in your libraries. Um, tradition. Lots of libraries have been doing things the same way for years and years. You've been, you've been providing services, you've been helping your patrons, and that's great. And some things work, there's lots of new things. There's always new things you can try. You don't have to keep doing the same things the same way. There's new services, new tools that are emerging, new technologies that can help you um, do these things better and serve your patrons better. Uh, some of this can be a little imposing, that's okay. Um, you need to try these new things. Just check them out, see what they are all about. It doesn't take too much to do that. You can do it. Um, you can uh, question what your director wants to do, what your other staff want to do, and try and um, explore these things. Um, and there are lots of things out there, lots of new tools. You've probably seen them and heard about them. Uh, Twitter and RSS feeds and blogging and podcasting, and it's just the list is endless. Um, in some people, it's like a, a train just going past, and it's fast, and new things are coming every day, and new things are being um, expanded and explored every day and improved, and you need to either be on that train with everyone, and some people are, and they're trying these things out and exploring them and using them, and that's great, um, and some people, not so much. You may think, feel like these things are just passing you by, that you're trying desperately to keep up or learn them and figure them out, and you're just not getting it, um, and you're just wondering, what is this all about? Some people may be feeling a little differently. <laughs> the train is going to run you over with all of this information and new technology and new services and new things that are available to you. And that's okay too. And that's what we're going to go over today is to give you a little overview of some of these things and services that are out there. What they're there, what they can be used for, why you might use them in your library, um, how the Library Commission is using them here to, do, to provide our services to you. Um, we're hoping that we're doing a good, um, setting a good example for you in this way. Um, we actually have a website that we have put together that is all of the different new services and Web 2.0 and Library 2.0 type things that we are using on a regular daily basis or just experimenting with. And I'm going to switch over to that website and show you um, some of these services that we have set up. I'm not going to show you every single one of them. There's a lot there. Um, and uh, But we'll go through as many of them as we can this morning um, just to give you an overview. But at any time you want to, you can go to this URL that is here on the screen and um, see what we're doing in all these different areas, um, see our different um, profiles that we have up there, the things that we have going, and, and set up your own and become friends with us on all of these. So I am going to go over to my app sharing here. There we go. <clears throat> Get this opened up. Okay. So can everyone see the uh, Commission Goes 2.0 web page that I have up now? Move it over here. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> it's kind of adjusting the size and view of it here a little bit. How's that? Okay, great. Um, so this is the page that I said that we have set up. At any time you want to, you can go to this URL, the nlc.state.ne.us forward slash service uh, forward slash index, and it will bring up this web page. Um, it's a pretty long page, and it gets added to on a regular basis as we um, add new things to it, new things. We just added something new yesterday um, that I'll be talking about as well. 
First thing we have right here at the top is our Encompass blog. This is our main source of getting information out to you that we have set up um, where we talk about all the different new technologies that we are using, experimenting with, and just make general announcements about things going on um, at the commission. Here is the blog itself, our most recent post from yesterday that um, I actually put up, our new uh, Learn Nebraska Learns 2.0 program. Uh, our blog is arranged in lots of different categories. If you're interested in over here on the right-hand side in a particular air topic that the commission works with, you can go to just post it and put up in those categories and, and put in those topic areas. Um, this most recent post actually is very appropriate for what we're doing today. Um, Last year, we over the winter, we did a Learning 2.0 program here at the Commission where we did um, 23 things in 16 weeks, 23 little lessons about new technologies and Web 2.0 type things. And a lot of people participated in that. It was a great, a huge success. And we had so much um, response for that that we've decided to continue it in our ongoing Nebraska Learners 2.0 program. And we just announced it yesterday. So this can go along with a lot of the things that we'll I'll be talking about today. A lot of the services are what we did in our previous learn Nebraska Learns. Some of them we maybe do again or more in our upcoming ones. But every month there'll be a new thing, a new lesson that you can follow along and learn. Um, some new technology, some new service, something new um, that's out there. Um, and you can earn a CE credit for each one. So every month there'll be a new one. So take a look at that and um, that may help you learn a lot of these things that we're going to be talking about today. Um, so blogs, you can set one up for your library as well. This one, as I said, for the commission, we do our announcements, things that we're doing, um, Nebraska Learns, um, our Nebraska Libraries Map Matchup, I'll be talking about that later. Um, Foundation for Lincoln City Libraries hosting that had their Wine and We fundraiser, all sorts of different things we put up on here. And this is the kind of thing you could use for your libraries as well. Start a blog, pushing out the information about whatever is going on at your library, announcing new services coming up, new projects. Um, new um just anything that you're doing or encouraging people to come to the library talking about services you've been doing um just a great way to get out there and get in touch with uh your patrons now once and i'm going to be jumping around a lot on this page our nebraska commission goes 2.0 page is arranged alphabetically which is great for finding things but for my session today i'm going to be jumping around and trying to do it in a more logical order of how things are related so i will be scrolling up and down around on this page here um, after you've gotten into doing blogging and either creating your own blog or following other people's blogs you are going to want to figure out a way of how to follow them or have people follow your blog RSS feeds is the way to quickly and easily do that. Um, this is a way where you can people can follow you and have the information automatically come into them rather than having to go around out and about to every single blog that is out there um, and have like multiple tons and tons of uh, tabs open on their browser. This is a link to the Library Commission's RSS feeds. We actually have put various different pages have a feed where people can follow anything that's been updated on these pages. Our announcements page, our book talk podcast, our Encompass podcast, um, the blog itself, of course, and then the blog, we actually have it broken up by category. So if you're only interested in a particular category on our blog, you can just follow that particular topic. And anything that has been posted with that topic um, assigned to it is you will get fed out to you. Um, our What's Up Doc blog for government documents is on here. Um, any publications that we do, you can have that fed to you as well. So everything that we have on here is things that you can follow. Um, and you can set these up for your own blog as well. Make sure that you have um, this available for people to follow your, your blogs very easily. Once you've got this set up or you are um, following, finding, finding these RSS feeds from other blogs and websites that are out there, you're going to need a way to easily organize them and follow them in one way. And aggregators are things that can do this for you. Blog lines is just one of them. There are other ones as well. There's Google Readers one. Um, lots of different ones are out there, but this is just one that we show you as an example of an aggregator that you can use for reading those RSS feeds, blogs, um, news feeds, whatever. And this links out to the one that we have here that we've set up at the Library Commission, well, we suggest some different feeds that you might be interested in. Um, other library blogs that are out there, 
to a couple of different public library blogs, librarian bloggers that we follow and think may be of interest to you that are out there. It's just not an exhaustive list of every single one that is out there, not at all, but it's a good place to start. So what you can do is when you're in here, you have just this one website that you go to your blog lines account. And if you want to see what posts have been put up by a particular ad on a particular blog, they will come up here and other than the side window and you can see um, what that particular person has been blogging about. Here's a marketing blog about marketing libraries. Um, she's speaking in Amsterdam on a uh, the U Game You Learn symposium being held there. Um, so you can see she's just announcing where she's going to be speaking. Uh, and other conferences reporting about different conferences that she's been to. This is Nancy Dow's blog. She does market. She does a lot of pushing about marketing and how to get your library out there. Um, so with using blog lines, you can just keep track of all sorts of different blogs all in one place instead of having to go everywhere out there to um, follow them all. Um, and as long as they have an RSS feed, it's very easy right here with within the system to add a new um, server and add a new blog into your blog lines reader. get back there we go now following um, blogs is a, that blog lines is a good way to follow pages and update on a regular basis because every time there's a new post it will automatically be just pushed out to your blog lines account um, sometimes you may want to just bookmark static web pages or other pages that you just want to check on a regular basis yourself or you just want to remember um, news stories you might see that you want to keep track of and a lot you um, may have been using in the past the bookmarks feature or the favorites feature on your browser which is great when you're sitting at your computer. However, if you go somewhere else, like if you're at home and you um, save something and you go to work and want to show it to someone, you don't have it anymore. Delicious is a website you can use for bookmarking um, pages, and it's an account you log to on the on the web and mark things there. And then anywhere you go, you have access to your bookmarks. Does not is not specific to just your workstation that you're sitting at. So this is great. I use it for everything. Now I have a personal one. I also use a commission one um, for work related things. Um, so you can just, as long as you're logged into it, save things and then show, share them with anybody anywhere. This links us to the commission's delicious account. There we go. Called NLC Reference. It was started up originally with our reference staff putting our best of the web websites into here as a test. So it has lots of different websites that have been um, looked at and evaluated by our, by our librarians here and put into here as good resources. What I've also, I've also been doing is, as we do these Encompass Live sessions, I add any links that are used in any of the sessions that anyone um, talks about or references into our Library Commission's Delicious account as well. So after a session is done, you have a place you can go to and find all of those links. You don't have to try and you know, remember them or write them down or anything. They'll all be here in our um, website. And you can go to anyone else's website as long as you know their um, account. Ours is NLC Reference. And you can set up your own to save your own bookmarks. Um, you can share them with other people. You can have friends on here, um, very social. And it's just a really great way to keep track of these things um, when you're bouncing around from computer to computer. You can tag the these with different um, terms. You can see I've done some here. This is the, I've actually just this morning added the Commission Goes 2.0 website so that it's here in our bookmarks. Um, you can also see over here and these numbers here, how many other people have also tagged these pages, have also added these pages to their delicious accounts. So you can see how very popular some of the things we have are. Um, nine people have actually saved the Commission Goes 2.0 page. Um, but down here you can see there's, we did a session a couple weeks ago on um, doing security on your public computers. Lots of people bookmarking things on antivirus software um, for Windows, over 3,000 people on this one. Um, earlier this month, we also did a thing about the summer reading program. 121 other people besides us have bookmarked that same website for the collaborative summer reading program. So you can see the kind of things that are popular out there and what other people are um, also bookmarking. So it's a great taking your bookmarks with you um, application is delicious. Okay. So that's saving bookmarks and websites out there. Something else you can do is create videos to promote your library. And there's a couple of different websites that we actually use here at the commission, YouTube and Blip TV are two. 
um, YouTube, you can upload it. Everyone I'm sure has heard of or seen videos on YouTube. And YouTube is great. You can upload videos. They can only be up to 10 minutes long is the maximum length. So they're good for short things, promotional things, um, tours of your library. We have a video here, our main one here on our page, now hiring at your library. We did a PSA it's about getting people interested in becoming librarians. So you can go ahead and create your own account in here and post up videos. Um, we've also put some things up here, some presentations we've done, virtual reference to the Library Commission, the One Laptop, One Child um, program, um, about eBooks, all sorts of different things. The gaming workshops that we've been doing, we post various things on here. We also, You also can favorite things, so you can save things that you've seen that you might really like. Um, we have things here about blogging, um, Sesame Street, rock and roll reading, <laughs> um, the uh, Erickson Sports Nintendo Wii Bowling. This is where um, some assisted living homes um, with seniors had a Wii Bowling tournament amongst themselves, a competition with prizes and, and bowling shirts and everything. It's great. There's a whole series of those. So you can save these things here, and you can see all the ones that we have favorited. We favorited 37 different videos and see what kind of things they are um, on there. So it's a really great way just to promote your live brand. YouTube is great. It's very popular. It has good quality, um, but the videos are, can only be up to 10 minutes long. For longer things, we've, we've signed up also for an account called Blip TV. And this is where you can put large, longer videos up. So you can have our full sections up here. The ones that you saw that were presentations on YouTube were just short versions of the like, kind of like a, a preview of what the full sessions were for some of those because they were much longer than 10 minutes. On Blip TV, we can post the full programs. And this is our library commission account. Okay, I'm not sure you hear that. That's Michael Sowers. He's doing a presentation on Creative Commons here. And now this one has the full presentation up there for you, so you can watch the entire thing um, with the live video and whatever he did here on the Flip TV. So depending on what kind of things you're trying to promote and put out there, YouTube is great for short things. Flip TV could be great for um, longer presentations you might want to post. So those are two great things for videos, and both of those, you can also embed those videos into your library's website as well. So if you create a PSA or do something, you can then put it onto your library's website and have it linked right from there and run right from within there. Um, or you can embed it into a blog post. We've done that with a lot of ours where we've you know, been promoting something and saying, here's a little blurb about it, and here's the blog, here's the video of this session that we did, or here's a little preview video of a session we're going to be doing, those kind of things. So they can all be embedded into your blog um, and website as well. Um, so those are great for anime, um, video type things. Pictures you may want to also do as well. Flickr is a great site for sharing and saving photos out there for your library. Um, you can upload photos to there. You can organize them into categories. You can share them with people. You can use these photos in your website and in your blog posts and anything else. Um, this is our commissions Flickr stream. There we go where you can see I've done some screenshots. These are screenshots at the, that's here right now that we use for that commission goes 2.0 page. But then we also have pictures. We had some librarians come from um, Tajikistan and visit here. We have pictures from that event. Um, let's see. We did a library camp and unconference here um, last year. So we have pictures of people attending that conference. So you can share all these kind of things um, with your patrons and anyone who may be using um, the library. On the Nebraska Book Festival, pictures we have from there. Any conferences that we present on our go-to, like the Nebraska Library Association and LA Neva conference, we, if we are there, we post pictures up. So anything and everything you can think of that you may be doing at your library, you can share the photos here on Flickr. Now, depending on what you're doing, of course, in your library, you may have to be aware of um, getting permission from people if their children are going to be in the photos. It's a whole thing you'd have to worry about with policies and things and decide how you're going to handle that. Um, but lots of libraries are doing it on here. We actually have lots of friends that we are friends with on here so we can see other people's photos. 
Um, other library other libraries are on here. The Nebraska Library Association has an account. Um, we also, at the commission, have Nebraska Memories, a separate second account for Fl in Flickr, where it is pictures from our Nebraska Memories um, project, where we have historical photos from different libraries and museums um, across the state. So in addition to having that as its own website, we also have put them in, in their own account into Flickr to share them there as well. So you can see a lot of old historical pictures. Um, in this case, it's lots of libraries that we've got here. So Flickr is definitely a great place to post up your pictures, share them, and then be able to use them in other resources. As I said, posting them into your website, sharing them in there, um, embedding them into your blog. So that's a good way of showing things that are going on at your library. Now you may be doing sessions and presentations on things and you want to share your presentations that you've been doing as well. What we use here at the Commission is the service called SlideShare, where you can upload any PowerPoint presentations you may use to a website and then share them with people from there. When I do presentations, we do presentations here in Encompass Live, I post all of them up to our Library Commission SlideShare account. And then that's where we send you to go and if you want to download the presentation for your own reference to take notes on. Um, whatever and this is our commission slide share account once it loads up there we go <laughs> where you can see um, all sorts of different presentations that have been done by staff at the commission um, we have uh, right now 69 and actually once I put today's up that'll be um, 70 I haven't uploaded this morning's yet um, all the slides shows that we have up here and you can see most a lot of the recent ones are encompass lives from the recent ones we've done in back to memories the summer reading program public um, access computer security so any one of these if you maybe you didn't see the summer reading program session you can go to that presentation and you can view it just here on the SlideShare page if you want to and go through the slides on here or you can also download it download it the presentation to your own computer and print it out for your own for your own reference um, every presentation has its own unique URL so that's what we send you to is a specific URL for whatever that presentation was um, you can also have contacts within here, people that you know that you want to, that will share information with you or you, they will share their slides with you. Um, I have my own uh, slide share account for personal things that I do. Um, Michael Sowers has one, lots of other librarians that you may know or heard, I've heard of have some as well. So this is great for if you are doing presentations, you can share them in here. You can also search it for ideas for presentations or if you're interested in a topic and you want to learn more about it and you think maybe somebody did a presentation on it, you can do a search in here on a topic and see what people have been presenting on. Um, you might get some good slides with good information on them that can help you learn about things. You might just find people who are really good at teaching these kind of things or know these topics and you can explore a little bit more about them, find their web pages and other things that they've posted about. So it's a good resource just for information for your own learning as well as posting up things that you're doing at your library. Okay, as you can see we're doing a lot of jumping around here. <laughs> um, the next topic I have here is Twitter. Uh, Twitter is a service uh, called microblogging application where you can put up little chat, little short blurbs of things that you're doing or things you want to share, or questions you want to ask of other people. Um, you've probably heard about it. It's been in the news a lot lately. A lot of um, famous people are using it. Um, Oprah is on Twitter now. That's the most recent big name <laughs> person that has um, joined up and started doing um, sending out information on Twitter. Um, but lots of the news sites and, and um, big places use it as well. CNN, MSNBC, and New York Times send things out. Lots of libraries use it. Libraries can use it to push out information about their library. Um, we have a lot of people, at libraries that I follow, that is, you can get little um, messages saying summer reading program this Saturday and what time, and then a link to the main page about it. Um, the, these, these um, Twitter messages are called tweets. They can only be very short, 140 characters. You got to really think small when you're creating, you know, thinking of what to write. But you can link out to other web pages, so that's okay. You can just say, you know, this so and so author is coming Friday, and go here for more information. And people can follow you on Twitter, just like they can follow a blog or a website, and um, get these messages, and then learn more about what your library is doing great way to push out information. You need to promote it so people know that you're out there doing it. 
you you know set up your Twitter account, start using it, and then um, promote it on your web page. Put it in your newsletter. Let people know if you want to know what we're doing and you're using Twitter, follow us, and we will see all the new things you're doing. Here at the Library Commission, what we're doing with it is we're posting the reference questions that we get downstairs at our um, reference desk. So, um, if you want to, this is more want to know what the library commission does what are we here what do we do as a library you can see the kind of questions that were asked now we're not putting the answers up <laughs> which to some people has been um, a, a problem uh, they want to know well, what is the answer I, I want to know that too well you can call us and find out if you want to um, we're also not posting as you can see anybody's personal information so if you contact us and just ask a question all that gets pushed out here is the question itself just basically trying to give an idea of here's the kind of things that we do with the commission um, so you can see here these are just from today. We've gotten questions about um, does the state require a license to install uh, CCTV? Um, oh, I've been searching all over for a stapler with a chain so our students can have one handy by the computers but not inadvertently run. I assume this means run off with it. <laughs> um, the question about the Omaha sewer project, somebody called here, the, the library commission about it. Um, labor laws for pregnancy in Nebraska, so all sorts of things were asked here. So this is just very interesting. I follow just to see what kind of questions that we are asked, but this is just gives you an idea of the kind of things that you can do. Um, you can follow people and people can follow you. So the commission is following some of um, librarians and other people out here. Uh, tour books is one that we're following. You know the tour books. Oh, a different person there. Um, and then people can follow us. We actually have 261 individuals who are following our Twitter stream. So 261 individual people or libraries or institutions, whoever, who are listening and seeing what we're saying. So it can be very popular and really be a great way to get your information out there. Something else great that you can do with Twitter is you can create little HTML code Twitter badges that you can post out on your web page so people can see the most recent tweets that you have posted out and get you know get them that's one way to get the habit promoting it be promoting it and get people sucked into actually following it on here so that's a really great resource for pushing out um information about what you're doing at your library and that's what a lot of people want now users want they want to know instantaneously what's going on they want to have you contacting them and telling them here here what we're doing you know get yourself out there um So that's kind of it. You can also do back and forth questions and answer things on Twitter. Now, in the library questions, when we don't answer any questions, we don't reply to people a lot. We're mainly just pushing out what we're doing. But a lot of libraries, they use it as a resource where people can actually ask questions and say, hey, what time is blah, blah, blah happening? And if someone is monitoring the Twitter account, you can reply right there within the Twitter and reply right back to them. So it's instant kind of um, instant messaging within Twitter. Um, however, you can do standard instant messaging, which we also do here at the commission, um, use IM to communicate. That's how a lot of people are communicating. Here at the commission, some of us staff members communicate with each other um, in instant messaging. Some librarians, libraries are doing instant messaging as virtual reference chatting. So people can come to your website and just type in a message and say, hi, I need to know blah, 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 and someone's monitoring in that and get an instant response back. Um, let's see. We have um, two different ones here at the commission, one for general reference questions and one specifically for questions about our Nebraska Access databases. And we have a link right here. I'll just go to the general Ask Librarian page. Now, this is our page to the commission for any, all the different ways that you can contact our librarians to ask them questions. Phone call, um, there's an online form for questions, or you can use the uh, Ask a Librarian chat window right here which um, I will do that. I haven't warned them I'm going to do this, but I'll just, you know, see with who's, who's downstairs. Yeah. 
So there, I just sent a message down there and hopefully someone's paying attention. Um, and you can see here, it lets you know if the um, person is actually online. It says, Ask Nebraska Library Commission is online. So um, we're live downstairs. Someone hopefully is monitoring it. Um, there we go. Hi, Krista. This is Beth. Beth is downstairs at the reference desk. So she just answered me in, what was that, 20 seconds or so and um, said hello. So I could ask her a question. She could answer me right here. Boom, boom, boom. I've got an answer to whatever my reference question was. Um, very similar to doing reference over the phone, but it's online. A lot of people are very um, internet centric. Um, people are using uh, instant messaging all the time to communicate, and this is the very comfortable, easy way that people like to do it. So we've put this um, uh, box on our page where people can um, contact us right away. So I'm just going to let her know that I'm all done playing. <laughs> um, so right there, back and forth, you can get um, a really good. And this is something you can easily do on your page as well. Um, we have specific uh, internet I, or instant messaging accounts that people can contact us directly with. Or we have this box. It's a little, a little bit of another thing, a little bit of HTML code from a service called Mebo, where you can sign up for, and then people can just, you can just put this little box on your page, and people can immediately um, start contacting you. Um, what some people have, do, have done also is in, they can input if you have access to it in your own local catalog people have taken this box and put it on their um, can't find any results for your search pages error page messages pages that come from when searching the catalog and get them an instant link right to their librarian asking them okay I did a search on blah and I didn't find anything can you help me find more things and you're right there you're right on the pages where they need you the most when they're at home or their office or whatever trying to search your website there you're right there be able to answer their question right when they're having the problems. So um, big part of a lot of this learning to, of this library 2.0, web 2.0 type services is being where the users are, being in the instant messaging services, being on Twitter, being where they're already at. Um, you don't force yourself onto them, of course, but just be there in case they want to you know, find you and communicate with you. Um, a couple of obviously um, well-known places to do this as well is MySpace and Facebook. Uh, where you can set up an account, set up a profile, and people can just find out more about your library, get more information about you, get to your webpage. People, as, you, as we know, lots of people um, are, have MySpace accounts and have Facebook accounts and are using them for major communication with their friends, with their family, with anyone. Be there for them and they will find you. The commission has set up a MySpace page. There it is. <laughs> um, our picture is the front door to the Library Commission rather than a, pro a picture of someone here. Um, and we have blog posts here that we put up, information about the commission, a link to um, our website on here, our Flickr account. Um, we have our, um, as you can see right here, what I was talk talking to you about is the Twitter um, Bad, just a little bit of HTML code that you can put on a web page. We put it here on our MySpace page. So you can see this is that most recent question. Automatically gets fed to here um, by this little piece of code. We don't have to go here every time and do it. We just do it once on Twitter and boom, it pushes it out to this page. This little code can be put anywhere on any website you want to. Um, and we have right now 229 friends following us, 229 people who also have MySpace accounts that keep track of what we're doing and want to know what want to know what we're doing at the commission. Um, this is my account. This is Alana Novotny's account here at the Commission. This is Michael Sowers. So lots of people we know and other libraries following us. The Idaho Commission for Libraries, um, Boulder University. So lots and lots of people are on here um, and institutions that you could use. Just be where your users are and let them find you. Promote it on your web page. Say we have a MySpace if you're a big MySpace user. Some people prefer um, Facebook. There is my Facebook down in our alphabet. There we go. So we look for Facebook. So we also have a Facebook account. So if people are there, we tell them, hey, follow our Facebook, become a fan of our page and keep track of what we're doing. We'll be posting up um, new items and things that we're doing on here. Um, our Facebook account, we have 54 fans. Not as popular yet. Um, but we do have 54 people that follow what we're doing and want to know what we're doing. 
We have information about the commission on here, um, our address, phone number, hours, the link right to our website. So you still have your main web page out there, you still have that, but you put yourself there where the people are. Um, lots of places, um, lots of departments in the state of Nebraska have pages on, on Facebook now too. You can find all sorts of things, the tourism department, um, Nebraska jobs, you can find on there. They're posting things on friends with them, so I follow them. Um, lots of um, institutions are doing this and just pushing out the information to wherever the people are. So it's definitely a good idea to, you know, get yourself out there where people are already and just put a, put a presence there. Um, doesn't have to be anything fancy. As you can see, ours is very simple. <laughs> we just have our logo here and basic information about us. But it's a place for people to learn about us and know what we're doing and keep track of um, what we're up to. Now, one most recent really cool thing we've done, once you've got a lot of these different pages out there, you can get all really creative with it. And mashups is one thing that a lot of people are doing where you can take multiple different things like a map and data and information and whatever and put it into something new, create something new and useful. And this is something that John Felton, our statistics person here at the Library Commission, has put together for, for Nebraska libraries. Um, he's combined data from our Nebraska Public Library Statistical Survey with maps, with a map, and um, let's see, here's the link. And you can see, once it loads up here, there it goes. There are little bubbles for every public library in Nebraska. So this is this is just the public libraries because it's from the survey we do of just the public libraries right now. Um, you can see color-coded bubbles for every library in the state. Now, if you click on one of these, like here, I'll just do Fairbury Public, you get a pop-up that tells you basic statistics about that library taken from the statistics report that they submitted information from. Um, if you want to, you can go to that library's website. If we know they have one, we have a link to that. Um, you can get directions to go to that library if you wanted to. Um, this is really cool. He just put this up a couple of days ago. Um, and you can also sort them by the size of the population, filter out. So if you want to find a libraries that are of the same size of yours and compare your statistics, you can do that. Um, I can click on these and you'll see that it removed any um, libraries that are in a population of over 50,000. That wasn't very many, maybe that's just Lincoln, Omaha. Then I can take off the ones that are even bigger, like size down. And as you can see, they start disappearing. Here now, I've eliminated all of the marks for the larger um, populations, and I've only been, I'm only left with the smaller ones. Anything, any population 20, less than 2,500 of their town. These are the libraries we have. And you can go all the way down to our smallest little ones. This is people, this is all the libraries we have in towns that have populations of less than 500. That's a lot of libraries. I think that's pretty awesome. <laughs> um, but you can play around with this all you want. You can say, I'm in a town of this size. Let's see who also is the same size town. So, um, and you can see our only big ones, as I said, like I know how to do biggest. And then you can start adding in the bigger libraries. Anyway, it's just a very cool thing that we've done here. So you can get really creative if you know, um, start learning a little bit more about these things, get some statistics, get some stuff that you can um, work together and create all sorts of things that can be specific to your town or to your library or your population or something that your library, um, your town may be interested in. Um, this is a general one for all Nebraska, you know, public libraries because that's what the commission, one of the, one of the things the commission is interested in. Uh, let's see. Okay, um, that was the last cool thing I wanted to show you guys on here. Um, as I said, there's a lot of different things on this web page. Not on this have time to go through every single one of them, but you can go here and explore them if you want to. Um, does anybody have any questions right now? I don't I haven't seen anybody come up with any questions during the session. Um, but do you have any questions about any of these that I showed you? Anything you want to know um, more about them? about any of these services or you want to see something on them I can uh, give you more information about any of these does anybody have a question you can either use the microphone if you have one or you can type it in the text chat box I have that open here so I can see any questions you might have
Uh, okay. Um, mm -hmm. Jan Sears from Alliance Public Library has a question. She said, what is WordPress? WordPress is a um, product that you can use, a service you can use to create a blog. Um, it's blogging software. Um, we here, the, the um, Blogger is also the one that we use, but WordPress is another service that you can use to actually create a blog. Um, you can get pretty creative with the setup and the design of it, and um, it's just, they do have, um, it's a slightly more advanced version, I, I would say, so you can do a lot more with it, but that's a good way that you could create a blog for your website if you wanted to. Um, some libraries have actually been using blog software and a blog as their main homepage. Um, a good way to have some static information in it and pushing out new information. And WordPress would be a good way, a good thing to use for that as well. Um, Blogger is another service as well. That's the one that we start people off on when we did our Learning 2.0, um, but not by any means the only one out there. Did that uh, answer your question? I hope, Jen, a, a quick answer. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions about the things the commission is doing? Um, any services that didn't show that you wanted to know more about? I'll wait and see if anybody has is still typing a question, possibly. If you do have a question, you can also use a little hand-raising thing in um, icon in the Centra interface to let me know if you do have a question. <clears throat> well, it looks like everybody's pretty quiet. I. I hope that's good. That means that either I totally stunned you with all of this <laughs> information or I uh, did a pretty good job, whichever. Um, as I said, you can go to this, say, this website, the URL here, and check out, look at any of the things that the commission is doing uh, to explore them more. Option of this list. A printout option of this. Um, Jan wants to say there'll be a printout option of this list. Um, you can just print out this web page yourself if you want to. Absolutely. Um, we don't have a special printout of it, um, but you can go to this URL here and print it if you want to. And then that will give you it. Um, I printed it out, and it came to um, depending on how you do your sizing and margins, four or five pages. It'll print out onto this entire huge long list of everything we're doing. Um, also, the PowerPoint presentation I did will also be available on our slide share um, probably this afternoon once I get it up there. <laughs> so that will have the URL also for this on there. And here is that URL that I was talking about. So any other questions, comments? Anything else you want to know over here? No? OK. Um, as I said, go to this website, go to the URL, check out what we're doing, um, keep track of us. If you have any questions about any of the services that we're doing, you can contact me. Um, you can contact um, Michael Sowers here at the commission as well. He's also involved in a lot of doing this. Um, lots of people at the commission are, are involved in using these pages. Everyone here has the ability to blog or add things to Flickr, um, to our YouTube accounts, everything that's out there, everybody uses here. So um, you can take a look at what's out there and um, you know, contact the appropriate people for more information about it. So feel free to call us um, with anything you want to know more about this or any other services that we did I didn't get to go into today. And that will wrap it up for this morning. Oh, Dana, you had a question? You can go ahead and type it into the um, text chat if you use the text chat button at the top. Or are you just floating, OK? <laughs> OK. All right, thank you very much for attending. Bye-bye.